Good evening. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, diagnostics, it's a topic that uh, doesn't usually get much attention. Uh, I was reminded of this when I saw this uh, old email from Lawrence Crowell from a few years ago. This is true. People don't make the distinction between code that's correct and code that has not yet failed. Sooner or later, things go wrong. And I saw a blog from Raymond Chen, he quotes a diagnostic, and there is a piece of it, error, error. What? <laughs> and he comments, I guess the tool doesn't know what went wrong either. <laughs> but I think we will all agree this is really not wonderful by way of feedback to a user, right? And then he proposed this. <laughs> And I certainly agree it's more entertaining just to sort of throw up your hands, right? But it's still not great as communication to and for users. The point is, of course, that good diagnostics are no joke. <laughs> well, we all know diagnostics arise from errors. What's an error? any failure that prevents some function from fulfilling its contract. And this becomes increasingly important now that it looks like C++20 will have built-in support for contracts. And of course, there are three kinds of failures when you have contracts involved. Just as a reminder, we have precondition failures, we have post-condition failures, and we have invariant failures. And that's sort of by way of reminder, I think most of us understand what that is. Maybe that one's a good thing. I looked at that and I just kind of shuddered. <laughs> I refuse to comment on this one. I... Now, a lot of programmers still rely on the classical assert macro that we inherited from C, but newbies really don't know how to use it well. And usually there are two guidelines, right? Use asserts when you're sure that something can't go wrong, and then proper error handling, whatever that means for you, for some people it's exceptions, when you can check for things that can go wrong. So basic runtime assumptions are good candidates for asserts, and I've discovered that a lot of programmers haven't seen asserts that look like that. Yes, that's an and. This compiles, right? And you can get a diagnostic of your choice when you get a failure report. Of course, it's important. Keep your asserts free of side effects, namely keep them pure. That's important. Don't use an assert when there are runtime errors you can predict. Bad code is not an error, it's a bug. Fix it. And of course, we are all told to check for errors early and often because the cost always comes almost entirely from fixing errors. Be sure to report them in a suitably dramatic way. Does not compute. Okay, a little louder, please. Thank you. One more time. Does not compute. Right, okay. Suitably dramatic. Uh, errors get more expensive to fix as the development process continues. Cheapest if the programmer catches it, as we know. It's cheaper that way than when quality assurance catches it, and it's far, far cheaper than the one the customer calls to complain about. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. So we often find messages that are called a terse, baffling remark used by programmers to put the blame on users. Of course we do that, right? Did you ever think of an, a message as being obsequious? This humble and worthless program is devastated to report to you that I cannot accept your scale value of a thousand because the base and thoughtless programmer who wrote me has restricted the value of this variable to between one and a hundred. <laughs> sure. So here are a few guidelines, the serious part of the talk. 
if you're going to write a diagnostic, be explicit that something has gone wrong because users are lost when you don't give them proper feedback. You have to be specific. Don't just say syntax error. That's not terribly helpful. Don't make your users think. Use human readable and comprehensible language, right? No abbreviations, no abers, right? I hate 404. What does it mean? Be polite, be grammatically correct. Don't blame users, don't imply that they're doing something stupid. Illegal command. There was an, a lady who got her first home PC about 20 years ago. This popped up. She thought she was in, you know, police were going to knock down her door. <laughs> she put her computer in the closet and never touched it again. It's a true story. And be affirmative. Input is not unconfusing. <laughs> what? Um, avoid inconsistencies. This is not the place for logic puzzles. Error, success. <laughs> what? Keyboard not found. This is a famous one from about 20 years ago. <laughs> all right, what do I do now? And above all, in the message, be helpful. Give them clear expectations. Tell them what to do. You know, your email could not be sent. Uh, okay, what do I do now? I don't know. Use error messages as an educational resource to teach your clients a little bit of something that's relevant and provide constructive advice. Here's the summary. Be explicit. Use comprehensible language. Avoid inconsistencies. And above all, be helpful. Thank you, but I think you missed it. <laughs> Good night, Penny. Good night, Will. Remember, brush your teeth. Thank you. <laughs> Good night.